modern one, one rivers. Time interval here, like today. Yeah, that's right. So what we're going to try to do is we've uh, we've uh, had all the different teams here, different, different trenches, and why don't we have uh, each of the groups kind of uh, talk about what the types of sedentary structures and what sort of grain sizes they see, and then we'll work our way uh, successively up, and then uh, then we can start musing about the uh, vertical succession of faces that we see and try to think about what how do we combine that to a, a, an Aggie uh, point bar model. <laughs> I guess, you know, first of all, you know, so that's the cutback side, and, you know, it's pretty vertical, pretty steep, so you can tell it's pretty mud prone, uh, stone prone, and, and uh, you know, that's uh, older deposits, you know, probably uh, thousands and tens of thousands of years ago within the valley that, uh, you know, it's mainly bottom, and some more continuous silts there that are probably uh, overbank deposits during various floods. Um, and then uh, on this side, you have a, a more gently steeping slide, and this is kind of uh, you know, all, all the river captains when they did the river, these would be the bars they'd know about. And, and essentially, when, you know, when they had the old paddle wheelers, or even if you, in today, if you want to uh, have something motorized, uh, you always want to go stay on the cutbank side because that's the, the deeper side. So about flow velocity, where do you think the, the highest flow velocity would be? Yeah. Okay, so who's the proud owner of this uh, good looking bitch? Yeah. And you want to tell us the seismic on the cross pits? That's all you need to do. So okay. what type of, what type of, uh, of stratification has down lap on one side and top lap on the other? Yeah, some sort of cross bed, right? Okay. See? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got some cross bedding. Alright. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> yeah. And then right below that we have some muds and clays. And below that we have some more sands. With it looks like it might be might have a little bit of muds in there as well. What was at the very bottom that got hard to dig through? Oh, pebbles. pebbles. These little oh. things that I collected. Oh, you took them out of there. Yeah. Uh oh. The dinosaur eggs. Oh, dang. <laughs> okay. No. You dug through the nest. They're pretty big pebbles, though. Yes, yeah, they they're are. huge. They were huge. They're cobbles. 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 Yeah. And what's the lithology that sits just above the uh, top lap there? It looks like some planar. What's silk? Silk. What's your grain size? It looks pretty medium. Medium. Yeah, it was still medium. medium. Upper medium. Mud in it, the dark stuff? Yeah, muddy. But it's still, oh, it's the dark still is fine. Muds well, the mud, okay. yeah, will be fine. Okay, now within the sands, what sort of grain size variations were you seeing? We saw medium, lower to upper, medium. And then there's also some big, like, small pebbles inside of that as well. So okay. there's, some, some, there's some much marginal. It's very, un no, it's not well sorted. There we go. It's poorly, it's poorly sorted. sorted. There poorly we go. Sorted. That was what I was looking for. Well, no, let's go, but, but is it overall? Because that could be a barrier across which fluids don't move. So some of you might want to answer in looking at this outcrop, is that clay drape just here? Or is that clay drape in many of your investigative trenches? Because if it covered the point bar, that could be a real barrier, at least baffled the fluid flow. All right? And I know Art showed like acreage and such, but maybe at the end of this, thinking about the depositional model you guys are can construct here, if we had like, just make it a well in two locations, maybe a producer on one side of the point bar and an injector on the other side of the point bar, do we think that those wells would actually talk to each other? So let's make the observations first. But I am intrigued by this clay drape that from an engineering perspective has very different properties. And how continuous is that would tell us a lot about the engineering aspects. It also gets into a model. fundamental thing if you were going to drain this point bar and if there are these increment clay drapes in it, you know, how many wells would you actually have to put it to tap the whole thing? It may not just be a, a homogeneous tank, you know, you know, so... Uh, and then always think, if we talk, to, well, we, we talk about this from a, let's think about a non-petroleum application. So what if you're in the sort of an environmental sciences or geohazards world? And imagine if we're trying to look at contamination. You know, maybe we'd have some sort of spillage of nasty chemicals over here, and we're setting up a monitoring well survey. We want to see how those contaminants, how that plume is moving out into the potential groundwater around. So it isn't just the oily stuff, the injection and production. You know, anything we do in our business has to do with sedimentary rocks. 
and you know, a lot of people will go into the more environmental side. But there's a lot of failed environmental uh, monitoring setups where they maybe had a petrol station that's been in a given location for 50 years and things have gotten into the groundwater. And they set up a sort of where their monitoring wells are and they're doomed from the beginning because they put them in the wrong place to actually see the extent of that contamination. So that's something we can think about here too as we, as we look at just this one point bar, what it will tell us about how you know, things might be going on. Maybe a little bit uh, lower in the profile than the last one. And, and what do you guys have here? Pebbles. That, just pebbles? We have some. It's all pebbles or what's the grain size? There's a range between like pebbles to set, coarse set. Okay. Yep. And what types of sedentary structures you see? We have like two cross beds. Okay. The profile would be here. I will just point out from this. This cross bed, the top one, there's a profile, there's another one here. Okay. Yeah, if you just take a look from this side, you can easily obviously see both of the cross beds. What? What sort of grain sizes did you have in this one? On the top of the bottom. Well, you know, through, through the different parts of it, what sort of grain sizes did you see? It's going to be coarse to medium. Okay. Okay, and then what, what do you have at the very bottom of this hole? Does that look familiar? This is just mud. Yeah, what do you think it cor might correlate to? To that one? The thickness of the mud's kind of like deeper. Well, you didn't get, did you get to the bottom of it? You don't only just have to. No, the first hole, yeah. Because we don't eat too many. Yeah. 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 But the paleo flows actually it's that way. It's, it's so exactly. Each system, each system has its own kind of direction. Well, the two end members for rivers are lateral accretion versus downstream. Okay. And so the, the thing about the way these rivers work is if you cut a meter from there, okay. the point bar grows a meter. Is most people say it's equal? It's, so is it exactly? No, like one point four to four eight. But it's pretty close. And so the river maintains as part of the whole equilibrium of uh, 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 rivers is they maintain the same cross-sectional profile. So if the river looks like this, you deposit here. So here's the cut bank, right? And so what did you describe? So we've got here, there's the active part of the river. Right there. And what do we see? We're just summarizing real briefly. As we went up the point bar and we sort of finished up here, okay, with the vegetation and trees, all right. If we were down low on the point bar, what did you see? So this, this was the coarsest grain material. So I'll draw in some gravel down there. As we went up the point bar, what did we see? Trough cross beds, and what about the gravel? The, the base, but it started becoming fine. I mean, we still yeah. saw granules and stuff, but things started getting sort of finer grained, and that's sort of the symbol I think you guys know for you know cross bedding and such, maybe in the middle. As we continued up to here, what did we see? Fine, very fine. It became finer and finer grained, right? Mm -hmm. So, pardon? It seemed like time was getting more compressed. Yeah, and, and what you're looking at is you're looking at the, you know, we could basically say like those gravels, then it was a clay drape. So that one gravel was the pre-existing flood, and the clay drape is almost our timeline for one of the floods. Mm -hmm. And above that clay drape, we had like a lot of gravel, less gravel, and cross beds going up into ripples. And ultimately, too, it was really sort of just fine grain and almost planar laminated at the top. So is that pretty much what you saw? That's along, you know, one time on one of these accretion surfaces, right? So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. And what the whole process by which these accrete is, is basically whatever you, you know, for most meandering rivers, the whole reason they're sinuous is that they're trying to conserve energy. They're trying to dissipate energy, actually. 
And the point is, is most rivers, they actually maintain their cross-sectional geometry. So if you add a little bit here, you remove it there. And as you go through time, you just keep on doing this as your cut bank migrates in that direction. So the vertical succession you produce is what was gravel here in the lower part of the point bar is then overlain by the middle part, which is more sandy. And so you get that slightly finer grained interval here with the cross beds. As the point bar continues migrating, right, what you ultimately are going to get is the upper point bar sitting on top of the middle point bar, which sits on top of the lower point bar. All right, and so what that produces vertically then is what Art keeps stressing is that Christmas tree where you're going to get this overall sharp base at the lowest cut of the river, most of the gravels down there, and as you come up the point bar, you get like these clay drapes as I try to draw those little spikes there, and you get, it gets finer and finer grained upwards. So the process of the point bar migrating laterally produces vertically this expression of decreasing energy and getting finer and finer grained. And so this is the classic example of Walther's Law. You guys have, usually we talk about what do you see vertically, you should see horizontally. Mm -hmm. Well here you got to come and see what this horizontally, you should see vertically. Okay? And so this is one of those, those opportunities to compare what you see along like a time slice, and as those time slices migrate through time, as the bar accretes in this direction, you're going to be ultimately producing a vertically profile reflecting the progressive higher energy movement in this direction will put su successively finer and lower energy facies on top of it as you go from the lower, middle to upper point bar. Yeah. That was a key point because usually we get the perspective of a core or an outcrop mm -hmm. where you're seeing vertical and you got to explain what's going lateral. Here you got a chance to actually do this and then if you have enough money for, you know, cool. you can actually put in a core here, you can reverse engineer it and do it the opposite way. And that's what those guys did to come up with their models. So, you know, this is actually a real classic uh, piece of, of work and, 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 uh, and geology and sedimentary geology, the uh, work that these guys did in the, the 1950s and early 60s on these point bars to develop these models. Well, good deal.